With Kroger brand products from Bakers, you can make all your favorite things this holiday season. Because Kroger brand's proven quality products come at exceptionally low prices. And with a money-back quality guarantee, every dish is sure to be a favorite. These are a few of my favorite things. Whether you shop delivery, pickup, or in-store, Kroger brand has all your favorite things. Bakers, fresh for everyone. Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Jumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby, mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa, take it easy, Judy. The Chumba life is for everybody. So go to Chumbacasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Ray Theater. Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. How nice to see you again. It's good to know that you've become a regular visitor. And since you're such a good customer, it's only fair to warn you that the story you're about to hear may be a little bit more disturbing than most. If the sounds of a woman screaming in utter terror unnerve you, then perhaps you may not want to listen to a tale called Where Fear Begins. It's a story about exactly that, fear. But perhaps the best way to find out is to hear what happens to Amanda Shepard on a dark night when moonlight streams through her window, but not just moonlight. Our mystery drama, Where Fear Begins, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Henry Slusser and stars Kim Hunter. The night is still and peaceful in the small town known as Manassa Valley. Most nights are peaceful here. And one person who enjoys that stillness is Miss Amanda Shepard. The big city is only 50 miles away. But for Amanda, it might as well be 50,000. But there are many ways to shorten distances. And tonight, something is going to happen that will destroy the peace and stillness of Amanda Shepard's life. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, hello. Amanda. Amanda, is that you? Uh, yes. Who, who is this? It's Vera. Vera? Oh, for heaven's sake, what's the matter with you? Don't you know what time it is? Amanda, I need help. You've got to help me. What are you talking about? Where are you? Amanda! Amanda, I'm scared. I don't know what to do. I'm I'm so frightened. You've got to help me. Listen, are you drunk? You've got to come out here. You've got to stay with me. Vera, will you please make some sense? It's two o'clock in the morning. I'm 50 miles away. Oh, for heaven's sake, Vera, I've got a class to teach tomorrow. Come to think of it, it's even worse than that. I have a faculty meeting. Amanda, don't you, don't you, don't you understand? I need you. Don't make me explain. Just come. <sighs> All right. Look, I can't promise when I'll be there exactly. Where are you staying? Vera? Vera, what's the address? Did you hear me? Vera, are you still there? <laughs> Vera! Excuse me. Yes, ma'am. What can I get you? Uh, nothing, thanks. I was looking for the manager. So are his creditors. Well, well, maybe you can help me. Have you worked here long? Truth is, I don't work here now. I'm what you might call a guest bartender. Oh, I see. Tell me anyway. Well, I'm trying to find someone. 
I, I know she no longer works here. She told me she quit her job about two months ago, but it, it's the last bit of information I have about her. Now, who is her, exactly? Her name is Vera Shepard. Do you know her by any chance? Nope, I can't say I do. Well, she called me last night and sounded as if she was in trouble. I was tempted to call the police, but well, knowing Vera could just be some of her melodramatics. Well... Thank you, anyway. It's okay. Hey, wait a minute. Yes? Uh, this Vera Shepard, is she blonde and pretty about your height? Yes. There's a girl I met in an encounter group last month. Her last name was Shepard, but her first name was Roxanne. Roxanne? Well, that could be her. She always hated the name Vera. She was always threatening to change it. Look, have, have you any idea where she might be living? Sure. She lives with me. What? <laughs> in the same rooming house. Upstairs. In indescribable squalor, I might add. What's a nice lady like you doing with a friend like Roxy? She's my sister. Ouch. Well, excuse me, I think I'll go see if I can pry my foot out of my mouth. Uh, wait a minute. Uh, where's this squalid rooming house of yours? Number 9 Hudson Street, near the river. If you see a bum sleeping in the doorway, that's the place. Hey, you weren't thinking of going there now. Of course. It's not a good idea. Now, you can't go into a neighborhood like that looking the way you do. What's the wrong with the way I look? Wait a minute. My friend Tony will be back here in five minutes to take over the bar. I'll go with you. Well, I'm sure I can find it alone. There's some pretty bad customers around there. Well, they don't look any better here. You can trust me. Underneath this dirty shirt beats a heart of pure soap. Well, all right. Careful of those stairs. They're in bad shape. Ugh, how can people live in a place like this? Nobody lives here. We exist on another plane. Our bodies may wallow in filth, but our souls live in penthouses. Is that what you learned in your encounter, group? <laughs> well, here's her door. The grand portal of the Princess Roxanne. She has a radio on. I hope that isn't all she has on. Princess is a little hard of hearing. Uh, she must be home. Let me try. Bill? Bill, are you in there? Might be asleep or stoned. Maybe she just went out and left the radio on. Look, I'm terribly worried about her. She really sounded dreadful. She said she was frightened about something. I'd always break the door in. It's pretty flimsy. Do you think we should? Just say the word. All right. Please. That's the word. By the way, what did you say your name was? Uh, Amanda Shepard. My name is Kirk Davies. Pleased to meet you. Ah. Yeah, that was easy. Come on in. Ooh, what an awful place. I told you, indescribable squalor. The beggar must be in here. Vera? Vera, it's me. It's Amanda. Oh, my... Vera! What oh, my it? God! Is, it, is she sick? <laughs> Look at her. Look at her eyes! Take easy, take it easy. I, I, I don't think she's breathing. <laughs> she's dead. Oh, my God, my poor sister is dead. All right, Miss Shepard, if you think you can talk about it now, let's get a few of the facts straight. There's only one thing you have to get straight, Lieutenant Durier. Somebody did this to my sister. Yeah, you told me. Uh, how long were you two separated? A little over a year. She left Manassa Valley about 14 months ago. Well, what for? Just to come to the big city? I suppose that was her reason. Any other reason you know about? Was there a man, for instance? There was a man, all right, but not what you're thinking. Vera had a fight with her father. Your father lived in Manassa Valley? Yes, my sister and I never got along very well with him. Uh, the both of you? Yes, both of us. But then Vera had this fight with him, and she packed her bags and left. She had some idea of becoming an actress or a singer or something like that. Uh, did she? No. I don't know what she became here. And uh, when she called you last night, what did she say exactly? She just said she was scared. Scared out of her wits. And I heard this terrible scream. 
Lieutenant, there's only one explanation. Somebody was after her. Somebody was in her apartment last night and killed her. I'm sorry, Miss Shepard, but uh, this is no murder case. But you saw her eyes. You saw the way she looked as if she'd been frightened to death. There's just no such thing, Miss Shepard. At least not on the law books. Your sister suffered a cardiac arrest. That's a heart attack. I can't believe that. That look on her face. It was just a death agony. That's all you saw. Somebody was after her. Some man probably. I'm sure of it. Well, maybe she was scared because she was sick. There was nothing wrong with her health. Look, the medical examiner knows his business, Miss. Of course, if you want to insist on an autopsy, that's your privilege. An autopsy? That means cutting her open. That's what it means. And if it proved you were wrong? That she didn't die of natural causes? Oh, we'd be the first to admit it. All right, then. I want an autopsy. Look, I'm sure that something horrible happened to Vera. Okay, whatever you say, Miss Shepard. I'll be in touch with you. Oh, uh, where will you be staying? I'll be staying right here. I just don't see how you can live in that place. Well, the rent's been paid until the end of the month. There's no reason I should stay anywhere else. I thought you had a job in Manassas Falls. Manassas Valley. I do have a job. I teach school. I've already asked for a leave of absence. I, look, I'm not leaving here until the police do something about this. You may have a long wait. It doesn't matter how long. I know something happened to my sister, and nobody seems to care. Listen, I'll be taking care of the bar for another couple of hours. Why don't I meet you later for a drink or something? <laughs> no, I, I, I have to get home. I have to call my father, and I have to get some sleep. I'm so dreadfully tired. Okay, but if you need a friend... Remember, I live one floor away. Yes, I'll remember. Dad, there was no way I could make the funeral arrangements yet. Why not? Because the police are performing an autopsy on Vera's body to determine the exact cause of death. What? I thought you told me she had a heart attack. Yes, but I still thought it'd be wise to learn more about it. Dad, she was only 26 years old. Yeah, but she wasn't a well girl, Amanda. You know that. She had rheumatic fever when she was a child. It always seemed perfectly well to me. Look, Dad, I'm just not satisfied about this. That's all there is to it. That's why I'm not coming home until I find out more. You're a stubborn woman, Amanda. You're just as stubborn as your mother was. All right, Dad. I'll try to speak to you again tomorrow. What's the hurry? You haven't talked three minutes with yet. I'm exhausted. I've got to get some sleep. Goodbye, Dad. <sighs> How can I sleep? How can I? I know I'm just going to lie awake all night. Just thinking about Vera... Oh, Lord, why did I decide to stay in this horrible place? I have to clean it up tomorrow. It's so filthy. At least that'll give me something to do. Oh, if only I could sleep. I wonder if Vera has anything in the medicine cabinet. Won't hurt to look. There. What a mess of bottles. Half of them are empty. What's this one? Aspirin. Wait a minute. This one's marked. For sleep, thank God. It's the only way I'll get to close my eyes tonight. Slippers. 
Who is it? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Who's out there? Who is it? Who, who's out there? Go away! Go away! Whoever you are, go away! What's the door? It's broken. It's coming in here! Oh, God! It's coming in! Ah! Oh, dear Lord, help me! Help me, somebody! Ah! Now, that's what I would call an unexpected visitor. Of course, there are neighborhoods in every large city that have their share of gorillas, but they're customarily of the human variety. How did this specimen get to Amanda Shepard's apartment? I'd be glad to tell you, but that would be spoiling the surprises that... Now, here's the second act of Where Fear Begins. Well, it appears that no harm has come to our friend Amanda Shepard, unless you call a good case of hysteria harm. But now, there's another visitor to the apartment, Kurt Davies, who quickly raced up the stairs when he heard her cries for help. I, I, I saw it. I, I saw it. So help me. I saw a gorilla. An ape. I, I don't know what you call it. Sure you saw it, Amanda, but in a dream. <laughs> I know the difference between a dream and reality. It was a real gorilla. It broke the door in. No, no, honey. I'm the one who busted in the door, remember? And first thing tomorrow, you've got to get a lock on it. Kurt, Kurt. Please, listen to me. This was real. I know it was. That this animal tried to get in here and kill me. When I started to scream, it went away. Amanda, I didn't see any gorilla coming out of this place. I mean, wouldn't I have seen it, too? Look, maybe it's hiding somewhere in the building. Maybe it has a hiding place. This is really crazy. Look, maybe that's what Vera saw. Maybe that's what she was horribly frightened about. Amanda, have you ever searched this apartment? Searched it? What for? Well, maybe you'd find something. Letters, a diary, maybe. Oh, Sarah never kept a diary. It's worth a try, isn't it? Come on, let's look right now. I'll help you. Why? Why should you want to help me? Why not? You don't really care what happened to my sister. You hardly knew her. Maybe I didn't want to know her. Why not? What's the point of knocking the dead? No, tell me, please. Why didn't you like Vera? I didn't like Roxanne because she called herself Roxanne when her name was Vera. I didn't like the way she spent her time looking for one kick after the other, even if it meant kicking somebody else in the teeth. Was she really like that? Look, it's late. Maybe maybe you should go back to bed. We'll search the place another time. No, no, no. You're right. You know, I should have done this before. Yeah, I remember seeing something in the bedroom, as a matter of fact. Say what? Uh, it looked like an address book. Wait, I'll get it. Maybe it is a diary. A record of all the kicks she got out of life. Uh, no, no. It, it's an address book. There aren't too many names in it. Well, let me see if I'm in it. No, guess I didn't make that much of an impression. Do you recognize anybody's name? Let's see. There's Tony's. That's the place where I work. I thought you were only a guest bartender. That's only temporary. Until my rich uncle in Argentina dies. That is, if I have a rich uncle. Wait a minute. What'd you find? Are you sure your sister was healthy? Well, my father doesn't agree, but I, yeah, I think she was, yes. I mean, I mean, healthy in the head. It ever occur to you that the call she made to you that night was just... Well, that she might have been wigging out? Oh, no. Look, I'm sure Vera wasn't crazy. Well, the reason I ask is she has Dr. Swally's number in her book. Who? Dr. Raymond Swally. I've heard of him. What kind of a doctor is he? I suppose you could call him a shrink, but I think he calls himself a psychologist. If your sister Vera was all that together, would she be seeing someone like that? I don't know. How would you like me to see Dr. Swally and ask him? No, the name isn't familiar, I'm afraid. 
But I won't trust my memory. I have a book that my secretary keeps for me. She might have called herself Roxanne Shepard. A neat alphabetical book. Miss Regelman tends to be a little compulsive about her record keeping. I'll have to explore her subconscious one of these days. No, there's no one of that name who was my patient. Maybe you knew her personally. Oh, I'm quite sure I didn't. Yeah, but your name was in her address book. She might have heard about me. You mean she might have taken down your name but never called you? Well, that's possible, isn't it? I guess so. How old did you say the girl was? Twenty-six. Hmm. Pity. And the cause of death? They called it cardiac arrest, but her sister doesn't believe it. She insisted that an autopsy be performed. Was it? Yes. And the result? Negative. It was heart failure, all right. Well, then, why isn't the lady satisfied? Because she still thinks that people can die of fright. Pure and simple fright. Uh, what's the use of my staying any longer, Kurt? I'm just packing up Vera's things and leaving. You want me to help you? No, I'm just taking everything that belonged to her, not even trying to sort it out. Don't forget the stuff in the medicine cabinet. I'll bring it to you. Well, most of the bottles are empty. Uh, so I see, but this one isn't. What's this, Amanda? Sleeping pills. I took one of them last night. Hey, wait, wait, wait a minute. Let me see that again. Kurt, look. The label. How about it? It says Dr. Swally. What? You said that Swally denied that Vera was his patient, yet he prescribed these sleeping pills. Are you sure? Well, see for yourself. Well, what do you know? Now, why would he lie about something like that? I don't know. He must be hiding something. I have to know what it is. Yeah, but how? If he lied to me once, he'll lie again. Look, what if I went to see him? But I told him about you, about your being Vera's sister. What if I didn't go there as Vera's sister? What if I went as a, a patient? Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? Ooh, a book club. Computer solitaire, huh? Ah, oh, sorry. We were looking for Chumba Casino. That's right. Chumbacasino.com has over 100 casino style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Over and prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. I'm so miserable all the time, Doctor. So depressed and nervous. I. I don't want to wake up in the morning. I want to go right on sleeping. Hibernating from the world. Do you think you can help me? Well, that all depends. How much do you know about my treatment? Well, not really very much. Just that I've heard you've been able to help people. But you must have also heard that my therapy isn't quite orthodox. Well, no, no. I guess I've never heard of that. Oh, don't, don't be alarmed. Basically, I'm a Freudian. I believe in the theory of the subconscious, but I look at it slightly differently. I call the subconscious the dungeon of the human mind, the place where we hide all our guilty fears. The conscious mind tries to forget their existence, but they cry out and rattle their chains and make our lives miserable. Do you understand? I think so. Personally, I believe that fear is the true enemy of mental health. What I try to do for my patients is eliminate fear. We're all afraid of something, aren't we? <laughs> right now, you look as if you're afraid of me. Uh, no, 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 I'm really very interested. It's one thing to know what we fear. Insects, mice, grizzly bears, high places. But many of our fears are so buried in our minds that we forget their existence. Do you ever have nightmares, Miss Lewis? Yes, uh, well, in fact, I had one just the other night. I'd, I dreamt that a gorilla tried to break into my apartment. It was, oh, so terribly real. Are you especially afraid of gorillas? I've never even thought about them, not since I was... For heaven's sake. You were about to say, not since you were a child. Yes, when I was a child, only four years old, I'd forgotten all about it. But you remember now. Yes, my, my father took me to the zoo. I, 
I was having a good time until he brought me to the gorilla cage. And it frightened you? Well, at first I was fascinated. I'd never seen anything like it before. So much like a man and not not a man. So Daddy picked me up so I could get a better look. And it, it reached for me. It reached out for me. Oh, God, how could I have forgotten that? I screamed. I screamed at the top of my lungs. And just the other night, you screamed again? Yes. Isn't it incredible? But don't you see what happened? You relived this fearful event of your childhood, what we call a traumatic experience. Now that you've done it, faced it, perhaps you've also uprooted it, along with other repressed fears. Oh, I don't know about that. All I know is I was absolutely terrified. Terrified, yes, but perhaps also purified. Miss Lewis, I'm sure you've heard of LSD, haven't you? LSD? Oh, yes, of course. It's that drug that makes you see hallucinations. No, it isn't the only drug, you know. There's mescaline, psilocybin, and a new derivative of LSD-25, which I've developed, known as EN-30. I don't understand. Well, LSD is the chemical shorthand for lysergic acid and diethylamide. A very small amount can produce hallucinations of every form and variety. EN30 is rather different. It produces only one kind of hallucinatory affect. The effect of fear. Fear? Some people call it, incorrectly, the horror drug. It's a powerful hallucinogen. Dangerous when used carelessly, but extremely useful under controlled conditions. It goes right to the sub-basement of human consciousness and brings up images from the very place where fear begins, the dungeon of our minds. You, you mean it makes people see the things that they're afraid of? Yes, usually the things which frightened us when we were children. And what makes it dangerous? The fact that we might be uh, scared to death? Oh, scared to death is a highly inexact term, but in certain cases... In, in the case of a... Heart condition. Oh, I instance. would never administer the drug to anyone with such a history. How long does the effect last? Well, varies greatly among individuals, but like LSD, the effect can often be cyclical. That is, the hallucinations can return on a cyclical basis, even if no EN30 has been taken for several days. This is one reason why controlled use is very important. Uh, Dr. Swally... Are you giving this drug to all your patients? Oh, no, my dear. Only to a few. And under stricter supervision. And, of course, with their complete understanding and agreement. I see. Yes, I, I really think I understand now, Doctor. Listen, Amanda, do you know what you're saying? You're accusing Swally of being a criminal. That's why he lied to you. He was afraid to admit that Vera was his patient because he gave her this horror pill of his. And she died. Well, you don't know that for sure. I Amanda. don't know it. He says he never gave anyone the pill except under controlled conditions. But he lied. He said he'd never give one of those things to someone with heart trouble, but he gave one to Vera. Look, you're all worn out. You better get to sleep, and we'll talk about it in the morning. I'm going to the police in the morning, Kurt. Will you go with me? Amanda, I've already been to the police. What? I saw Lieutenant Duryea. But why? I've been worried about this undercover game you've been playing. So I talked to Duryea, told him about what you were doing and what you suspected. And? Duryea made a check of Swally's records, Amanda. He made it part of the routine police inquiry into your sister's death. What are you trying to say? Swally wasn't lying about it. What? He wasn't lying about your sister. She was never his patient. But the, the, the sleeping pills... They must have belonged to one of your sister's roommates, or maybe she just swiped them from somebody else's house. Didn't you tell me that Vera was always swiping things? Oh, Kurt. Am I wrong? It wasn't his fault. That's the way it looks. If your sister was having nightmares... She was having them on her own. Oh, it's so warm in here. It's still 
warm to sleep. I've got to get, open that window or I'll suffocate. Okay, it's so hard to open. Oh, there. Whew, that should help a little. What was that? Oh, good Lord. Oh, good Lord, something flew in here. It's right in my room. Ah! It's not a bird, it's a bat. It's trying to get in my hair. Ah, it's in my hair. It's so all tangled up in my hair. Ah! What is there about a bat which fills almost all of us with dread? Is it the cape-like wings, the rat-like face, the raking claws, the terrifying screech of their voices? Can anyone blame Amanda Shepard for the cry of horror she emits when that winged monster comes flapping into her room? Or was there really a bat? Was it only a creature of her imagination? Amanda Shepard has had another nightmare. A dream so vivid that she lies in her bed this morning in a state of shock. Still unable to believe that the bat, which flew into her room the night before, isn't still entangled in her hair. It may have been the heat, Amanda. This building is a real hot box when the weather turns warm. Yes. I don't know. Maybe that's all it was. Maybe I had some kind of a heat stroke. You ask me, you ought to get out of this apartment right now. Maybe that's another reason you have bad dreams. This place is depressing you. Yes, you're right. There's no point in my staying here anymore. The police have proved that, haven't they? You just have to accept the truth. Your sister died because... Well, because she died. And I guess that means I, I should go back. Doesn't mean you have to go back to Manassa Valley. Listen, have you ever thought of teaching right here in the city? We've got an awful lot of kids here who No, need... Kurt. No, it's time for me to go home. So the whole thing was a waste of time, wasn't it? I suppose so, Dad. I told you you were being stubborn, wasting two weeks on a wild goose chase. Dad, don't you understand? Vera died without either one of us being there. She died all alone, in agony. And whose fault was that? Who told her to leave home? All right. Let's not talk about it anymore. Oh, now you even sound like your mother. Whenever she didn't want to hear the truth, she'd ask me not to talk about it We've anymore. we said it all, haven't we? I'm going to bed early. I've been sleeping very badly lately. Amanda, uh, wait. Yes, Dad? Look, why does it have to be this way between us? I don't know what you mean. It's been like this for years, this, this wall of... Ice between you and me. What put it there? I've asked myself a thousand times and I still don't know the answer. Maybe you'll never know, Dad. Oh, I know it started right after your mother died. That was when you... That was when you turned against me. You and Vera both. Oh, please, Dad. We'll discuss it some other time. I'm, I'm really too tired. Oh, no, you'll never discuss it with me. You'll just go on hating me for the rest of your life. I don't hate I you. I saw the look in your eyes the day your mother died. I saw the way you looked at me, Amanda. I don't remember how I looked at you. How could I? I was in a state of shock. Oh, you were in a state, all right. And you've never snapped out of it. But please, Dad. All right, go to bed. No use trying to reach you. Never been any use. Hi, handsome. Hey, this is turning into a permanent job for you, isn't it? I guess I'm just a natural born bartender, so oh. what can I get you tonight? Well, how about a Manhattan? Did you learn how to make one of those? <laughs> I'll give it a try. Hey, uh, how's your blonde friend these days? Which one? I know a half a dozen blondes. Mm, you know the one I mean. The one who looks like a school teacher. She is a school teacher. No kidding. 
Now, where is she now? Going back to teaching school, I guess. Hey, you really liked her, didn't you? That's what I heard around. I liked her. But she's strictly a small-town girl. Is it true that she was Roxy's sister? That's right. <laughs> it's hard to believe, isn't it? That Roxy Shepherd would have a sister like that. <laughs> hey, hey, did you know that I was her last roommate? What? That's right. I paid half the rent on that filthy pad of hers. I couldn't stand it more than one week. She was stoned all the time, you know. Yeah, I figured she hit the stuff pretty hard. That could overtake anything, as long as there was a kick in it. She even went to some doctor just to get some kind of pill he was handing out. What'd you say? She heard about some nutty kind of LSD that a shrink was using on his patient. She told me she was going to see him and get some... Hold it a second. Do you know the shrink's name? No. Was it Swally? Dr. Raymond Swally? Well, how should I know? Well, I've got to know. How many times do I have to tell you I never had a patient by that name? If you don't believe me, ask the police. All right, maybe you never had a patient named Shepard, but maybe she didn't give you her right name, first or last. I'm quite sure you're mistaken about this. I've only administered EN30 treatment to four patients. I can assure you this girl wasn't one of them. Dr. Swally, will you just look at this photograph? Oh, all right. Now, look, does she look at all familiar? Nope. I never treated her. Look, look carefully. It's a professional portrait. She thought she wanted to be an actress, and she's pretty heavily made up. Mm-mm. Never saw this woman before. Well, I guess I'm wrong. All right, doctor. Sorry I bothered you again. Wait. Just a minute. Something come to you? She does look familiar. She wasn't a patient, but I have seen her before. Where? Right here in my office. She came in without an appointment. That's why there was no record of her. She just sat outside and waited. And did you see her? Just for a few minutes. Just long enough to realize that she wasn't interested in therapy. All she wanted was the drug. EN30. I told her that I wouldn't accept her as a patient, that she wasn't nearly stable enough. I gave her a prescription for a mild sleeping compound, nothing else. But then... Then what? Well, I... I don't know this for certain. I could be mistaken about it. About what, Doctor? I always suspected that she might have been the one who stole those pills. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Are you saying that Vera Shepard stole some EN30 from you? I can't prove it. It wasn't until days later that I missed them. I remember stepping out of the room for a few minutes to take a call from a hysterical patient. Dr. Swally, Vera Shepard was a klepto. Her sister told me that she stole things all the time. If she stole those pills of yours... Good Lord. Can it really be? The dosage was so large. Too large for safety. If she took them... Anything might have happened. Something did happen. She had a nightmare, Doctor. She conjured up a nightmare so terrible that it killed her. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hurt anyone. You know that wasn't my intention. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You did say that you gave her a prescription for sleeping pills. Yes, I did. I doubt that she ever filled it. It was the EN30 she really wanted. Then what was in that bottle? What were the pills her sister took? A sister? Dr. Swally, I've got to get to a telephone. Hello? Hello, is Amanda Shepard there? Oh, yes, yeah, she's here, but she's asleep right now. Who is this? Is this Mr. Shepard? Oh, that's right. Uh, can I, uh, can I take a message? Mr. Shepard. Well, I'm sorry, but I told you she's fast asleep. Would you know she's taking anything to help her sleep? Well, as a matter of fact, I, I thought I did see her take something. She's very Listen, tired. Mr. Shepard, you've got to get a doctor for her right now. I know it sounds crazy, but if she took a pill that her sister was using, she may be in danger. Well, wait a what, minute. What, what, what are you talking wait about? A, I'm driving out there, but, but your daughter may be in terrible danger right now. <laughs> Who is it? Who's there? It's your father, Amanda. Let me in. 
Dad? The door's open. I can't open it, Amanda. You have to open it for me. Oh, all right. I couldn't open the door, Amanda. I have your mother. I have to hold your mother. Oh, God, she's bleeding. She's covered with blood. Go on, Mother Amanda. I said I would kill her one day. And now I've done it. I've killed your mother. <laughs> no, 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 it's all right, darling. It's all right, baby. I'm okay now. Oh, my God. Oh, Daddy. It's just a dream, honey. Just... Just a bad dream. Daddy, Daddy, please hold me. Don't let me go. No, Amanda. No. I won't let you go. That's what Dr. Swally told me himself, Amanda. He's discontinuing the use of EN-30. Says it's far too dangerous to take any more chances with. Frankly, I think he's right. Good. Do you know what a misconception was? What? I saw my father walking into the bedroom, carrying my mother's dead body. Ouch, that must have been pretty grim. Well, the strange part is, it reminded me of something. Something I'd forgotten a long time ago. What was that? When I was a little girl, I used to hear my father and mother arguing downstairs. You're fighting with each other night after night. Well, I was so afraid. That's well, understandable. But do you know what I was afraid of? I was afraid that my father was going to kill my mother. That's an awful thought. Well, it wasn't true, of course, but it was a fear that stayed with me all this time. But now I... You know, I feel as if I can get rid of it. Kurt, I... I know it sounds crazy, but but wouldn't it be something if it turns out that Dr. Swally had the right idea? Well, personally, I don't think I would care very much for that kind of shock treatment. In fact, I think I'd rather have my neurosis and gorillas, bats, and so forth in my house. But to each his own, huh? Our cast included Kim Hunter, Mason Adams, Alan Hewitt, Ian Martin, and Phoebe Doran. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams... Casino asking people what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky. Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car before my kids PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere playing at luckylandslots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void prohibited by law. 18+. Plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details.